the AWS Financial Services Symposium, presented by The Cube. Good morning, nerd fam, and welcome back to New York City, one of my favorite cities on the planet. We are here at AWS Financial Services Symposium. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE. We have got a power-packed day of 15 different interviews, but our next segment here is with some superstars from HGL Tech. Please welcome to the show, Anubhav and Bhaskaran. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I mean, it's my pleasure. It's, it's kind of you to show up. What does this event mean for you guys? How is it to be here? You're around all your friends, all your AWS financial services friends, your partners. Tell me a little bit about the day and, and why HCL is here. We'll go to you. First, I start with, you know, it's great to be here in, <laughs> in New York. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, AWS is one of HCL Tech's key partners. Uh, you know, there's, uh, it's one of our uh, largest ecosystem partners, very important in everything that we take to the market at HCL mm -hmm. Tech. Uh, uh, if you think about the kind of innovation that cloud uh, is bringing to the enterprise, to the market, to our customers. Uh, you know, we want to be at really the forefront of that change. And yeah. our partnership with AWS means a whole lot in making that happen for us, whether it's on the cloud, data, uh, generative AI, you know, all of those things. So I think uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, a very exciting day for us to yeah. meet partners, uh, customers, kind of hang out together uh, and really talk about, uh, you know, what cool stuff we want to do next. Yeah, so let's dig in there a little bit. You mentioned, and I love this because I think, and you can confirm or deny this, but one of the things I think is really cool about the AI era we're in right now is large enterprise companies are collaborating in a way that is a little more integrated, I think, than some of the other technological revolutions we've seen because, to your point earlier, better together. So why, is, why are your shared customers better off when HCL Tech and AWS come together? Why is that magic? Yeah, go for it. Um, absolutely. Right. Uh, in today's uh, integrated environment, there is a lot more technology components are getting integrated and getting cross leverage. Uh, so from that perspective, if you look at any new technology trend like Gen AI needs a lot more compute power. Mm -hmm. this, and that is where Illumi coming in in terms of is services and engineering organization like HCL Tech along with yeah. AWS, like a cloud provider, coming in together makes it a lot more powerful message for the customers. Yeah. And with the way we look at it is that it is not only HCL Tech and AWS coming together, but also the customer also coming along with us as a tri-party is making a whole lot of difference in the marketplace. And that enables a faster leverage of new things like Gen AI and implementation of them, be it proof of concept, pilot, and rolling it to production. So that is the way we look at it. I love that. So it's it's not just better together from a partnership perspective, but really having those customers. The whole ecosystem together, yeah. What are customers saying to you? I imagine they're so excited. Are they overwhelmed? Where are they at in their journey? So that is an interesting question, right? Yeah. In terms of like any, uh, any so if particularly financial services, is heavily influenced by regulators. Mm -hmm. This. Uh, unlike a uh, retail industry or any other other industry verticals, financial services, be it banks or capital markets or insurance, which Anubo can speak about a lot, this is heavily governed by the regulators and with the big time, yes. Yeah. And that too, with the last 12 months, what has happened in the industry with high interest rate leading to many other things happening in the financial services industry. Very much. So it has to be driven, it is heavily guarded and governed by the regulators because of which what is happening is that financial services industry particularly is adopting the gen ai kind of trends faster but with a lot of caution what i mean by that is there are a lot of proof of concepts going on this thing how they are getting rolled into production is will take a little bit of a time because of this guardrails which are in place I think I, I love that going fast but cautious. It's like an F1 car, essentially, at this point is where is where we're at. Is the analogy that comes to my mind. So and that yes. a, that's a very good analogy you brought in. Formula One car, but faster and guarded because there is a safety car in front of them. Right. Oh yeah. So okay. So actually, let's dig in there because I really like this. Do you feel like you 
deal with regulators all the time. Do you feel like the regulation is going to be able to catch the cadence here and and speed up a little bit? Because it's, I mean, financial service is not known for being the fastest moving industry. Let's just be honest about that. I think it's inevitable that they will. Yeah. Uh, there needs to be a happy balance because there are some real risks that one needs to be, you know, cognizant of. Yeah, yeah. You know, whether it's to do with data privacy, it's to do with IP, it's to do with, you know, hallucinations in the language models themselves. Uh, and the implications that they might have on the users, uh, you know, that are going to be using some of these, uh, you know, generative AI applications. So I think that there are some real risks that need to be worked through, but it's inevitable that a happy balance will get struck. Uh, it's it's true that financial services are the most heavily regulated or one of the most right. heavily regulated industries in the world, but it is also true that, uh, you know, at least, you know, the way we see it, uh, they will be one of the biggest beneficiary industries from generative AI. So it's, uh, you know, it, there's a big price to go after, uh, but to do it responsibly, you know, Formula One, you know, make haste, but slowly, you know. I love you this. Can, We're just going to be on the right track that. this whole yeah, segment. But, uh, but I think that it's inevitable that a happy balance will be struck. Mm. Uh, and, and, and that's when you'll start seeing a lot of the proofs of concept that Baski spoke about uh, getting into production at large scale, because that's where the benefits are. Uh, you asked earlier, where, yeah. you know, where, you know, what our customers are saying to us, uh, you know, in the very beginning, you know, their questions to us were really about um, how real are the benefits mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, can you put your money where your mouth is? Can you, can you reduce development efforts by, you know, 30%? I mean, all sorts of numbers were thrown about yeah. in early days, but I think that there is a lot more pragmatism now. Uh, because customers have been through a cycle of proofs of concept, so they understand the benefits, mm -hmm. but they also understand, uh, you know, where some of the challenges are going to be, and and so there's a lot more pragmatism that has come in as we move to more production use cases. I like it. it, it we're really hanging out in this cautious but fast zone, but this but this is great. So. It feels like we're on the precipice of a paradigm shift to a degree as this as we go into prod when it comes to to Gen AI in the financial services industry. How is the experience going to change? What's going to be different or more seamless for the end user or for your customers? So, if you look at uh, financial services industry, while it is cautious, guarded, and things like that, but their financial services industry is one of the most innovated industry. They continuously innovate be it in terms of trade speed, response, settlement, many other things part of it. So what is Gen A kind of thing is going to do or doing it is that eliminate the mundane work, which is like trade surveillance, looking the for... stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The boring stuff, that which is like repeated tasks on mm -hmm. this thing. They are going to be taken away from the humans, this whereby it is going to eliminate the uh, uh, lacuna in the system, one, mm -hmm. eliminate any uh, manual errors, for example, risk associated do with those things, this part of it. What it makes another part is it releases great amount of human capital to look at innovating newer things, customer, focus on customer experience, focus on how the business can be improved further and further kind of thing. So that is what is going to happen in this entire cycle and that we are already seeing those things on this part of it. Be it on a contact center service agent making their job much easier, for yeah. example. So those are all the things which will impact the end user at the end of the day. And also it will also result in reduction of cost of business. Some part of it will be passed on to the end customer as well. So we're all going to benefit. Yeah. Everyone's going to have a better job. Customers are going to have a more seamless experience. Yeah. So there's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, but it is It is on the counter thing is at the end of the day, humans are humans. In the short run, there will be a, a fear factor, scare factor. On this. Exactly. Till the time they are getting more opportunities to upskill and do better things. So that will, that duration of transition time, we need to take care of it as an organization for our employees. Yeah. How how do you advise customers on managing that? I mean, this is a bit of a shift internally for folks. And I can imagine there's a little bit of apprehension. All change comes with a little bit of apprehension. What's your advice there? I think, uh, you know, our customers have become far more used to rapid changes in technology. If you really think about uh, if you really think about what's been happening in, in the technology landscape, for sure, over the past 10 or 15 years, uh, you know, there was cloud and 
then there was, you know, spectator revolution, and now there's this big Gen AI revolution. And each of these have called for a different unique set of skills uh, that need to come to bear. And I think what we're telling our customers is that th this this need for constant reskilling is, uh, you know, it's it's an existentialist kind of, uh, uh, you know, mode in which you have to be. You know, reskilling is not something yeah. that you're one and done. Right. It's because, right. because the rate it's iterative. of change is yeah. going to keep coming at you really, really fast. And therefore, uh, where, you know, HCL Tech, for example, you know, is helping our customers. Uh, so we've built out labs uh, where customers can come understand what some of the, uh, you know, the options are from a generative AI and cloud and data, all of that coming together, point of view, how some of the use cases can be brought to bear. And along with that, we're also building several, uh, you know, skilling and reskilling options and capabilities for our customers, uh, not just on a on a one-off basis, but something that they can do on a far more sustained uh, basis. And that's where, you know, people like HCL Tech come into the, into the picture. Oh, and that's why you're such an important partner for some of your mm -hmm. customers. You can guide them on that path. Yeah, please. You, if I had to add on that, what yeah. about, uh, we stand by what we talk. So what we do is organizational change management is a very important aspect. That's right. What Anubhav talked about in terms of skilling and reskilling, what we do is to show to the customers, our own organization, we continuously reskill. For example, 50,000 engineers already, we are leveraging the, for example, Amazon Q kind of programs mm -hmm. in this thing and reskilling them in this thing. So, and we showcase that as a, itself as a change management proof case to uh, our customers by how we leverage Amazon, for example, mm -hmm. and reskill our engineers so that they can be productive and they can be, there will be more stickiness within the organization. And also it is bringing in value to our customers. So when we show that kind of proof cases, that helps the, our customers' organization also to look at their own change management, their own employees to be reskilled and things like that. So that is how we uh, educate the customers, create awareness in that cycle. Yeah, it's like you're all arms linked together, getting through it, figuring Absolutely. out, navigating. No, it, ma it makes a lot of sense. You two have been working together for almost two decades, decades yeah. at the same company. I have to ask, HCL Tech obviously doing something great from a culture perspective. What's kept you both there for 20 years? I, I, I think it's a fantastic place to work, right? I, I, yeah. I, uh, I, you know the the thing that uh, that you know that really works out, if you ask me, is one, we're in the technology world where, as I was saying, the pace of change is so rapid, no two days are the same. Right. So you always feel like you're doing something new and cool, and that keeps us really engaged and motivated. I think also the culture of the organization, which is very yeah. very focused on, uh, you know, how it can enable uh, you know all its employees to really add value to customers. And that's the key focus that does everyone's got. So everyone feels very involved. Uh, you know, you feel like, uh, you know, you're valued. Uh, and, and I think that goes a really long way in, uh, you know, in, uh, in, in in keeping us where we are. So uh, yeah. it's a great place to work, I think. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Feeling valued is such an important part in a sense of purpose when it comes to our professional exactly that. careers. Do you agree? Absolutely. And, and uh, uh, just to give you some uh, context to that is that uh, I have been personally, I didn't join HCL, for example. I was rebadged from Deutsche Bank into HCL Tech oh, 25 years back on this okay. thing. So uh, it was a very, very refreshing uh, space yeah. when I came in into HCL Tech. This and if you look at that, we call HCL Tech as not only a safe home for employees, mm -hmm. but it's a growth home for the employees. And the fundamental principle with which we work is that if the employees are taken care and if they are happy and if they are enabled to fulfill their passion, yeah. they will take care of our customers. So that is the whole uh, philosophy around which we work, and that that has helped all of us, and we all of us have grown. And doing multiple things, yes. I wasn't expecting the warm fuzzies from this segment here. <laughs> but this, this, this is actually a really nice. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, wow. Well, thank you both so much for spending the morning. I have one final question for Hope. So when we're having this interview a year from now, what do you hope to be able to say then that we can't say yet today in terms of where we're at? I think the one thing I'd like to be able to say then uh as I said earlier, you know, we are, you know, we're 
we're moving with our customers and with our partners, AWS, at a stage where we're moving from POCs and success on POCs into more production, some of the use cases we've got. Our customers have made significant investments on generative AI. Yeah. AWS has made significant investments. We're making significant investments in that space. Where we'd like to be a year from now when we come back and have this conversation is to be able to talk about some use cases that went into production at scale and delivered uh, and delivered scale benefits to our customers. I think uh, that, that's something that we'd like to talk about a year from now uh, because uh, you know you know that's the goal that all of us you know like he said customers AWS HCL Tech put together. That's the goal that we all have. So you know. Perhaps that's what we'd like to talk about a year from now. I love it. Uh, absolutely. It's, it's uh, uh, three parties coming together, HCL Tech, AWS, and the customer. Uh, not in any particular order, but mm -hmm. three of us coming together and talk about the end customer experience impact and the business impact for our customers. So that outcome, if we can talk about, that will be a good success for this entire partnership as well as the technology adoption itself. I love it. Well, I can't wait to have that conversation with both of your wonderful smiling faces yeah. next year when we're here. This has been awesome. Likewise. Thanks for Thank you. Us. Thanks for having Absolutely us. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah, my pleasure. And thank all of you for tuning in to our fantastic power-packed coverage here at AWS Financial Services Symposium in New York City. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.